Okay, so I've cleared my mesh and um, now what I want to do is I want to add um, the line on the top of the um, plate and the right hand side of the plate together in order to make a four sided um, shape. So I need to go into modeling, operate, booleans, add and lines. And I pick the right hand line and the top line and I go OK. Um, it asks me do I want to keep the existing lines or delete them. Let's delete them. OK. So now we get a warning. It's telling me that these two lines don't have a continuous slope with a shared key point, which is this point up here. And this discontinuity could cause problems if I'm going to use this line to, to drag or sweep um, a, a volume later on. I'm not going to be doing that. It's not going to be a problem. So in this case, I'll just ignore that warning. Um, so now I can bring up my mesh tool again. So back into meshing and mesh tool. And now we can turn on um, the mapped option. And just keeping the, the, the settings I had for the lines before, I'm just going to go mesh, click on my area. And now I've got very regularly shaped large elements on the outside, slowly transitioning into very regularly shaped small elements on the inside near the area where stress is changing rapidly. So this is quite a good mesh for this problem. OK, so let's go ahead and work with this. Um, so as usual, we want to apply X direction constraints on this line here and Y direction constraints on this line here. And another way of doing this is ANSYS has special um, symmetric um, boundary conditions that we can use that will just do that for us. Um, so let's use those just for a change this time. So apply structural displacement on line. You can see down here, normally we would just pick on line. Down here we've got symmetry boundary conditions. Let's pick that on lines. So I can pick this one and this one together and go OK. And you can see these S symbols have appeared here telling me that ANSYS now understands that there's a symmetric boundary condition on those lines. Again, let's apply the force as before. So the first thing we have to do to apply the force is couple the degrees of freedom of the nodes on the right hand edge. So let's use put a box around those. So we're putting a box around all these nodes here. Go OK. Remember we have to give it some number. So 99. We want them coupled in the X direction. That's OK. OK. And now we just want to apply the force to one of those nodes. So apply structural force on nodes. And it doesn't really matter which one of them we pick. Okay, and again, it's a uh, x direction force, and it's one kilonewton. Okay, so now let's save our analysis and solve. Solution is done. Uh, let's, as usual, look at our deformed shape deformed and undeformed edge. So you can see the undeformed edge is dashed there and my deformed is in blue. So again it's done exactly what I've wanted it to do. It's moved across to the right and it's um, shrunk in the vertical direction. And also you can see the original shape of the hole and the new shape of the hole there. So the, shape, uh, the, the hole has gone from a circle to an oblong. And again let's look at our uh, stress. So We've been looking at von Mises stress, so let's keep on going there. So again, here we are. So we have got um, a maximum stress this time of 604, which is twice what we got before. OK, and why did we get that? Because we've applied a symmetry boundary condition. When we apply our force, or it's assumed that our force is also applied on the other side. OK, so this is a little bit of a trick just to show you what happens when you don't think properly. So this time we've got 604. We should have applied half the force because it's assumed that the other force is applied on the other side when you use a symmetry boundary condition. OK, so if we had modelled um, our um, quarter of a plate at the origin, there's, we could actually take advantage of symmetry and, 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 and look at a few things. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly um, move the model to the origin. OK, so you can see we're quite a bit away from the origin here because originally the, the origin was at the um, bottom left hand corner of our full plate. OK, so let's just um, let's just plot the elements again. 
so let's clear our mesh, um, move um, the area, and just um, rerun the analysis um, with the correct values in. Okay, so first of all, um, we need to go into our uh, mesh tool, and we need to clear our mesh. Okay, and then we look, take our area. We want to move our area down to the origin. So move uh, areas. And it's the area we need to move. Okay. And it asks us for um, the X and Y offset. So we want this to be half the width of the plate and half the height of the plate. So minus half the width and minus half the height. Okay. So now you can see that our area has moved down there. Okay. So uh, let's just fit that. So our area is now centered on the origin, or the hole is centered on the origin. Okay, let's remesh that again. Okay, and it's kept all the line divisions. Um, let's just see if it has uh, kept the symmetry. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, so we'll just reapply it again. Um, so again, Let's apply the displacement symmetry on lines. Okay, there we go. And um, again, let's plot elements and then let's apply our force. Sorry, we have to couple our nodes first. Couple the degrees of freedom, put a box around them. Okay, again, there we go. So this time, remember, because of the symmetry here, it's going to reflect the load over. Um, we need to make sure that we only apply half the load this time. Okay, so let's apply structural force on nodes. Oop, wrong one. Let's just unpick that. And this time, 500. Okay. And let's run our solution again. Solution is done. Um, let's take a look at the results. Again, always check the deformed shape. Um, yep, looks fine. The value is um, 0 0.2540 to the minus 5 meters, which is kind of what we'd expect for linear elastic analysis. Um, let's look at the stress. And hopefully this time we've got the correct value. Yeah, so we're around um, 300 megapascals, which is what we expected. Okay, so um, let's take advantage of symmetry now, and let's go and turn on some of, the, some of the symmetry effects. Let's look at the whole plate. So even though we've modeled just one quarter of it, the fact that we've told that it's symmetrical, we can go plot controls, style, uh, symmetry expansion, periodic and cyclic symmetry. Let's pick one quarter dihedral symmetry and go OK, and there's our full plate. OK, if you wanted to turn off those max and min symbols that are annoying you, you can go plot controls, window controls, window options, and here, max min symbols, let's turn those off. Um, suppose you wanted to actually see the overlay of elements on this plot, we can go plot controls, style, um, edge options, and change from all edge only to edge only all. And let's just do a replot. Okay, so there's our elements overlaid, our element divisions overlaid on our results. Okay, so I mean uh, that's not not quite clear. Let's uh, let's turn off symmetry again. Plot controls, symmetry expansion. Oops. Plot controls, style, symmetry expansion, and no expansion. Okay, so the actual um, overlay of elements is okay in the unexpand unsymmetry expanded plot, but not in, in when it, the symmetry expansion is there. So it's quite clear here. Okay, so that's the end of um, this tutorial. So um, if you like these tutorials, please remember to subscribe, and you could help me out a lot by uh, clicking on some of the adverts that pop up during the videos. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.